After an exhaustive search for America's next master chef, the final 18 have been chosen. Now, it's time for them to take their place in the master chef kitchen. When I walked in that kitchen, I was like, holy The idea that I get to use this incredible equipment is just completely and utterly unreal. It's spacious, it's big, there's, there, there's sections of it that look like a fancy restaurant. I'm looking at the pantry. This is amazing. I'm just a small girl from Sub Chopping. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I literally had goosebumps all over my body. Beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have arrived. <laughs> Welcome to the phenomenal MasterChef Kitchen. This place will make or break you. And for one of you is where you'll graduate from a home cook to become a master chef. And we'll be walking away with a quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> right, don't stand there. Get your stations, let's go. Quick, come on. Master chef means the world to me. I want this so bad, I can't stand it. I'm like shaking in my chef shoes. Look at this. You're cooking with the top of the line Viking range. Every piece of equipment you could ever dream of. All right, now we've seen what you can do with all the options available to you. But now it's really time to test your creativity with your first mystery box challenge. In this challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one stunning dish using nothing more than the ingredients hidden inside the box. We are gonna select only the top three dishes. And the person with the best dish will have a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. And that's important because the next test is an elimination test. And I'm sure none of you want your first day in the MasterChef kitchen to also be your last. On the count of three, I want you to lift those boxes. One. I'm thinking to myself, oh, what the hell is going to be under there? I hope it's not like veal brains. Two. What could it be inside? Meat, fish, rabbits, frogs. <laughs> three. Yes! Oh. Yes, salmon! Oh. You have the most amazing piece of salmon. Strawberries, fennel, white asparagus, ricotta cheese, fingerling potatoes, pistachios, balsamic vinegar, fresh dill, and the most amazing puff pastry. The advantage for the winner is huge. Remember, there's an elimination just around the corner. Your 60 minutes starts now. Off you go. A box of ingredients like that is going to test any professional chef, let alone an amateur chef. The mystery box is kind of like opening your pantry the day before payday. It's not necessarily the ingredients you want, but what are you going to do with said ingredients? The question is, do they feel like they have to use the strawberries? I mean, to me, the strawberries are really what kind of puts you off balance. So yeah. Who has the balls to leave right. the salmon well, on the that's table? The thing. Are you going sweet or are you yeah. going savory? What would you do? I would do a confit of salmon, poached mm -hmm. in olive oil, with a salad of shaved asparagus and fennel, and then a dill mustard vinaigrette. Right, Christian, talk to me about the dish. What are you doing? Um, pistachio crusted salmon with a little uh, balsamic strawberry a reduction going over that. Ever use strawberries and salmon together? Uh, no, not exactly. Why do you think that salmon needs the strawberries? Um, because you gave them to me. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Angel, 
What are you cooking? It's something I've never tried before. I'm using a little bit of the mustard that we got, some of this cheese, got some salmon patties. You put mustard and ricotta in the sauce? Yes. You're doing a ricotta sauce? Yes. Wow. All right, Susie, talk to me. What, what do you got? got? Um, I'm doing salmon three ways. I'm smoking salmon, I pickled salmon, and now I'm going to grill salmon. One of the three you're going to get used? Or oh, you're no, do no, I want to use them all, yeah. So take a look at my smoker. We don't have chips, but instead I used the bread. You're smoking in the bread. I'm smoking in the bread. Do you think that you're clearly, like, ahead of the pack here? Um, or... I think I'm playing smart, but I'm not cocky. I have a lot of different techniques that I just want to show you guys. Susie has a very high opinion of herself and it's a lot higher than the opinion that I have of her. Okay, guys, just over 40 minutes to go. Start visualizing that dish on a plate. I'm doing a strawberry balsamic seared salmon with pistachio crusted uh, potato and fennel cakes on the side. 35 minutes to go, guys, yeah? And I wanted to use the egg and the, and the, um, the noodles, just kind of add a little bit of color to the plate. Kind of a bird's nest. Just over 25 minutes to go, guys. Hey, Jenny, how are we doing? Great, I'm Good. excited about what this challenge. What are you challenge. doing, are you making salmon cubes? Um, I have a savory tart with uh, the ricotta and mustard puff mixture. Puff pastry? Puff pastry. Right. Let me ask you a question. Taking yes. a beautiful, giant hunk of delicious salmon, making very small cubes, are you risking dry, arid salmon by making it so small and taking away any chance of it being moist and delicious? I'm, I, I'm now afraid that you said it. Tony. Yes, Chef. Smile a little bit. What's the matter? Why are you looking so miserable? What's wrong? Oh, I'm not miserable at all. No? Just what? waiting. Waiting for what? Actually, I'm poaching salmon over that liquid. OK. Be careful. Your handle's on fire, and so is your basket. Wow. Oh. It wasn't on fire when I was watching it. I'm not frazzled. Just caught me by surprise a little bit. It's kind of like the teacher catching you when you don't have your homework done. <laughs> I think I see a lot of people who are cooking in advance. And I'm not sure if they're just testing no. or is that the dishes we're going to eat. Some of the portions of the salmon as well yep. are really thin, really small pieces that are going to overcook in a yeah, second. Dangerous. There's a lot of strawberries and salmon, which I right. didn't expect to see. It doesn't really play well. Right. 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 Pistachio and salmon could work, right? Yeah. You got the crunch, you got mm -hmm. the textural But contrast. isn't it too obvious? Yeah, but these are home cooked. Susie's doing a trio. She's basically created her own smoker. With I foil. think she's on a high wire without a net. 12 minutes to go. This is exactly when I'd start cooking my salmon. Ugh. Taste, taste, taste. Last five minutes. I'm trying to decide whether or not to plate my balsamic reduced strawberry. If I plate that strawberry, he's also going to eat my soul. Last three minutes to go. The home cooks must use these final moments to make their dish stand out. The judges will select only three dishes to taste, so impeccable presentation is critical. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop! Here we go. Five. Four, three, two, one, and stop! Stand back from the stove! In our first mystery box challenge, the judges select only three dishes to taste, and the winner of the challenge will have a big advantage going into the elimination round, where at least one person will be sent home. Trust me, we've been round. We've scrutinized everything. But before we announce the top three dishes, I think it's important that we tell you about the worst dish. All three of us felt that it was embarrassing, and we were quite shocked because we thought that individual was a serious contender. And that dish belongs to... Ben Starr. The sauce was hideous, the salmon was way overcooked, and whatever you were trying to do with that cake was just embarrassing. Here's me, incompetent Ben Starr, biggest disappointment of the evening by far. OK, the first dish that stood out, it was dairy, it was bold, belongs to Susie. 
Congratulations. Good job. I am a really great cook, and my dishes are restaurant quality dishes. I am the best chef here by far. Describe the dish. I made salmon three ways. I did a trio of pickled salmon, smoked salmon, and grilled salmon. Yeah, it's nice. It's got strong, contrasting flavors. Three completely different tastes you've delivered. And considering you've only had 60 minutes, the one issue I have is the strawberries. It's just very, very sweet. It needs less of it because it's very, very overpowering. But good job. Thank really good chef. job. Well done. Thank you. The salmon here yeah. with the balsamic. That's probably the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of, just because the balsamic itself takes on that raw fish flavor. Got but it. But that's it. Thanks. Thank you. I think that there's a little hocus pocus that really doesn't translate. I think the smoking doesn't really taste smoked. Okay. It's well cooked and it's flavorful. A little bit of uh, smoke and mirrors, I think, on some of the technique, but the overall effect is positive. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. So the next dish is a dish that I think would certainly win the award for being the most restaurant ready. And that dish belongs to Christian. Well done. Good job. So tell me about the dish. I made a pistachio crusted salmon with a strawberry balsamic reduction. And I put that over some asparagus with a little caramelized fennel and some roasted fingerling potatoes. So we see a salmon that is um, perfectly cooked, being crisp on the top and uh, translucent and moist. And the bonus for us was the effective use of the strawberries. Well done. So we saw a lot of people crusting the fish with the pistachio, but uh, this one was nice and even all the way across. Yeah, really yummy. Really good job. Thank, Thank you. you, Chef. The actual combination, the fingerling, the fennel, the asparagus, the salmon, is done. Absolutely on the money. Good job. Thank well you, done. Thank you. All right, the third and final dish that we're gonna taste is one that, while walking around, I think we were kind of nervous about. The third and final person who has the potential for a great advantage in the next challenge is Jenny Kelly. Well done. I'm in the top three and I can't believe it. I'm not as advanced as some of these other people. I'm just a home cook from Dallas with a lot of passion who's quit her job. Describe the dish. It's a savory salmon tart with the ricotta and the mustard spread, caramelized fennel, and the shaved asparagus. The mustard gives it a little bit of zing. The creamy ricotta underneath gives it that nice moist mouth feel. All the components are really, really delicious. Good job. Thank you, Chef. Good job. Thank you. You've kind of gone away from what everyone else did. If you had to conceptualize a menu dish, this is the kind of stuff people think about. You basically invented a pizza out of what you had, and that is super smart and super impressive to someone like me. Thank you. the three ways. Also good. It's Christian. It's like a restaurant quality. Mm -hmm. um, very tough. OK, three remarkable dishes. Sadly, there can only be one winner. I'll be going for salmon three ways. I mean, so ambitious. I'm super proud of my dish. I deserve this title. Or is it the restaurant dish that looked like it would be sort of finished off by a chef that's cooking in a four-star restaurant because it had that, that wow factor. I wanted this bad before, but I really, really want it bad now. Or is it the unorthodox salmon dish, the tart? Really good job. 
I'm not going to be in the back anymore. I can be up there with the best of them. The advantage for the winner is huge. Congratulations goes to... Three remarkable dishes are we going for. Susie, salmon three ways. Or is it the restaurant dish that was put on the plate with such finesse? Like a four-star restaurant. Or is it the unorthodox salmon dish, the tart? Looks simple, but my god. Susie, Christian, Jenny, congratulations. Christian. Woo! Yes! The competition's just starting, and uh, I headed out of the ballpark. I'm just gonna keep on taking them out one by one. I think my dish was a lot better than Christian's dish. I'm really disappointed, honestly, just like with the judging for this challenge. Okay, you have a huge advantage in the next stage in this competition. Come with us, let's go. As the winner of the mystery box, Christian is now the first competitor to enter the MasterChef pantry. Here, Christian will be put in control of the elimination test. Each elimination test will see at least one person leave the competition. And now, Christian will be given a huge advantage as he gets to pick the ingredient or style of food that everyone else must cook with. But the one thing he can't control is the theme of the challenge. That is in the hands of the judges. Now, the theme of today's elimination test is the cuisine of Europe. The first one, el primero es España, Spain, the essence of the Mediterranean. It's truly where the ocean kisses the mountains and the flavors combine into the most incredible paella dishes, the most delicious sea mackerel, the vivid colors of olives and tapenades. It's truly the culinary mecca of Europe at this point in time. The second, France. French food is a world unto itself. You have different regions, from Normandy to the Riviera, from Brittany to the fine dining of Paris. The ingredients are impeccable. This is where cuisine was created. And of course, the third cuisine, clearly, the number one cuisine anywhere in the world. British. <laughs> Excuse me, we're freaking 26 miles away from France. Yes? 26 <laughs> long culinary miles. <laughs> Excuse me, do you mind? Oh, no, go ahead. That looks delicious. You think of British cuisine, you think of the most amazing comfort food from fantastic shepherd's pie to the most amazing fish and chips and even a stunning trifle. And that's the kind of comfort food that I've grown up with. Now, keep in mind, whichever cuisine you choose will be the one that everyone will have to cook today. So, you can pick the one that you're most comfortable with or the cuisine that your competition will fear the most. Which one are you gonna go for? I think a lot of them do know Spanish. I think a lot of them don't know French, but British. I love comfort food. That's my, probably my strongest, my strongest strength. Uh, I'm going with... Christian, back to your station, please. We gave Christian the choice to cook Spanish, French, or British cuisine. I have no idea what's in store for us because it seems like Christian would pick something that most of us don't know how to do. So Christian, what did you pick? Vive la France. I'm very excited because if you know a little bit about cooking, you know something French. It's, it's just a fact. Whether or not you can execute it correctly, that, that, that's another story. French? I don't know jack about French except French fries and croissants in French kids. Advantage. And that is you don't have to cook anything. You are safe from elimination. <laughs> when the judges said that Christian didn't have to cook, I think all of us were a little pissed off. So you will have a glass of champagne 
Thank you. Proceed up to the gallery. Up to the and, gallery. And uh, sit and watch everything else happen. Enjoy. So, Christian Safe, for at least one of you, it will be your final hour cooking in the MasterChef kitchen. Are you ready? Yes, yes Chef. Your hour starts. Now, off you go. While Christian enjoys the safety of the gallery, the remaining 17 contestants now face the pressure of their first elimination challenge. They all have access to a pantry fully stocked with every ingredient imaginable. Has anyone seen time? I have no idea what I'm gonna cook, and I have one hour to do it. Tracy, do you have any heavy cream I can borrow? This is all I'd like to take back. Thank you. You're welcome. The stakes are so high, you have to put up the best dish you possibly can. And if you don't, then you're going to be one of those people that are there in front of the judges waiting for them to decide whether or not it's you that they're going to be sending home. And I don't want to be that person. Growing up in Manhattan, I've experienced many different cuisines and many different French restaurants. And I'm definitely at an advantage with this. I have the people that I'm rooting for, and I have the people that I'm not. I think Max's age and his ego gets in the way. I think he's been given like a free ride probably most of his life. I'm watching you, Max. Amazing challenge. Yeah. This is the heart of MasterChef. Now yep. they're out of cooking what they're familiar with. They have to conceptualize a dish to win yep. the contest and to put the flavor on the yep. plate and then cook it. All right, Aaron, what are you doing? I am um, getting ready to do some sweet potato pan frites. OK, so um, sweet potato fries. Yeah. Not very French. Right. Uh, protein? I'm doing a carpaccio. A carpaccio? Yes. Would you know carpaccio is Italian? Really? I got it from Julia Child, so I assume that it was... Of uh, course, but, you know, hey, it may be the best carpaccio ever. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, Chef. How are you? Good. What uh, are you making? Uh, a peppercorn uh, filet with a Bernese sauce with uh, whipped rosemary garlic potatoes. Have you ever been to France? No. French cookbooks? French no. restaurants? No. OK, OK. Yeah. So you're kind of flying blind. Yes. OK. Wine in the dish and wine to me, and we're all good to go. I haven't even drank that much yet. Yet, keyword. Jenny, what are you cooking? Hi, chef. I'm doing a French onion soup, a cream of mushroom soup, and a cream of zucchini soup. Why would you do three soups and not just one stunning soup? Um, when I've been to Paris, I love to go to bistros and see what the soup of the day is, yep. and these are three of my favorites. Right. Right, Max, what are you cooking? All right, I'm going to be doing a uh, cod in a velouté sauce. I'm going to do some roasted potatoes with some mushrooms and some mussels in there. A cod in a velouté? Mm-hmm. Right. Have you been to France before? Of course I have. Yep. Angel, what are you rocking on? I'm trying to make a fruit tart. How are you going to stop the yolk from cooking when you put it in the hot stirring. cream? you got to keep stirring. You have to be very careful yeah. with that, because a scrambled egg strawberry tart would be no bueno. No bueno. Right, Derek, what are you doing? I'm making a savory gaugere. It's like a French pastry. It puffs up, and it's hollow inside, and it's got Gruyere cheese in it, some thyme. And I'm going to stuff that with a uh, white wine poached egg. Wow, this is ambitious. Yeah, it might be stupid. really ambitious. Yeah. Good luck, good luck, good luck. 20 minutes to go. A lot more desserts than I thought. Angel, I think, for her lack of experience in French cuisine, is doing a strawberry fruit tart. We're yeah. seeing some classic things, too, like Mark's doing a beautiful au poivre filet with some whipped potatoes and some veggies. Could be good. Absolutely definitely. But you wouldn't serve a steak au poivre with Bernays. No, never. I got 15 minutes left. I am running against the clock right now. I feel like I'm about a quarter way done. Just under 10 minutes to go. Really focus now. For the mystery box, I was in the top three, and I don't want to lose that momentum. My potatoes are a little liquidy, so I'm going to try and thicken them up. I don't know if I'll have enough time. I forgot to weigh my tart down, so it's starting to bubble. And five minutes left. I still got to put my in. And then I have to bake it still. Please, sweet Jesus, let me just get through this, because I really don't want to go home. I cannot let the French win this war. This is a disaster. Only a few minutes remain in the first elimination test. Make sure you taste everything that's going on that plate. And many are struggling with the French theme. At the end of the day, at least one of these home cooks will be eliminated. My eggs just broke, so I'm going to have to redo this. OK, guys, last three minutes. Start putting that dish together. Finishing touches. 
Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Everybody stand back. Good job. Christian, come on down, please. Stand by your station. Because Christian won the mystery box challenge, he did not have to prepare a dish and is safe from elimination. But that's not the case for the other 17 home cooks. The theme of today's elimination challenge was French cuisine. Some of them look extraordinary, and some of them look like a une assiette de A plate of the judges will taste everybody's dish. Then they will select the three worst dishes and at least one person will be eliminated. Okay, Max. I'm absolutely craving to be singled out as the best in the competition. Um, I think I'm a little bit overdue. I think my dishes have stood out. I poached a cod in a little cream velou, seared it, broiled some potatoes with some rosemary and sage, and also did some mussels. So the cod needs to be flaky and translucent. Ooh, very nice. Fish is beautiful. The sauce is delicious. When I was 18 years of age, my parents didn't have the money to eat out in those restaurants that you've eaten out in. I had to go behind the scenes and get my ass kicked in the kitchen. You sat the other side from a customer's point of view, but You've taken that seriously. And today, for the first time in this competition, it really shows that you really do know how to cook. You have just raised the bar even higher. Congratulations. Thank that you, Chef. Delicious. Good job. Thank you. Very good job indeed. If that's a sign of what's to come, trust me, we're going to be in a great mood. Uh, Can the next home cooks keep the judges happy? I made profiteroles with lemon vanilla cream. The baking of the pastry itself is spot on. Petite success for a big Italian like you. Thank you. OK, Susie, come on up. I did a duo of tarts, a ganache with raspberry and meringue, and then a lemon curd tart with apple and meringue as well. The overachiever. An amazing job getting both of these done, you know, in 60 minutes. You remind me of the girl in high school I used to sit by that was like, teacher, you forgot to give us homework. <laughs> I was that girl in high school. <laughs> Alejandra, right. I seared some cod and sat it over a crouton, and I steamed some clams. It should just flake. It's cooked perfectly. Thank you so much. Good job. Uh, Jenny, let's go. Yes, Chef. Can Jenny repeat her earlier success after being in the mystery box top three? What have we got? This is a cream of zucchini soup with fresh dill, French onion, and mushroom with tarragon. This one is a... Zucchini. And this one? Mushroom. Mm -hmm. In your onion soup? The onions aren't cooked properly. And also, you know, when you caramelize those onions, you finish them off with some mustard in there first, so it really brings the heat up. It's a little bit greasy as well. I'm disappointed. You've gone backwards. The, the, these, these, these really are not even soups, quite frankly. These are like purees. These are like baby food. Under season, not very good at all. I think this has strong contention for bottom three, and uh, you better hope there's some really, really bad dishes out there. It was really hard to hear all that. It was sort of guttural. I felt like I was punched in the stomach. Well, highs and lows, highs and lows. Mark, what do you have for us? I have a filet crusted peppercorn, a creamy rosemary garlic mashed with a bernet sauce. You normally put bernet sauce on your steak? French. Not many French people I know, but does the consistency look nice? You like the thickness of it? I would have liked them a little thicker. Thicker than that? What's in here? Shallots, rosemary, and garlic. And flour? 
I had it a little bit of starch because it was raw? liquidy. It's raw flour in here. What? That is a severe technical error to serve raw flour. There are several things that you can never do in cooking, and adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. I was praying that someone else's dish was worse than mine, but adding flour to mashed potatoes like that without cooking them down is, is a big no-no. Even if someone's dish was worse than mine, I still have a really good chance of going home. In the French Elimination Challenge, after some great dishes... Amazing job. The baking is spot on. You have just raised the bar even higher. Mark has just committed a cardinal sin. It's raw. There's raw flour in here. And mashed potatoes. I don't get it. Such a shame. Derek, let's go. Bring us some inspiration, please. Let's get back to something French, something exciting, dangerous, avant-garde. What is it? It is a gaugère, and it is stuffed with a white wine poached egg, served with a creamy white wine toast. And the hope is that when you cut into the egg, yeah. the earthiness of the yolk kind of evens out those two yeah. sharp yeah. textures. Wow, that is fantastic. Let's hope it tastes as good as it looks. It's delicious. It really is delicious. Thank you, thank you. That's inspired me. Good job, well done. Oh, thank you, sir. thank you. <laughs> All right, Angel, come on down, please. This looks like a mess, a hot, heaping pile of mess. You look angry, what happened? French got the best of me. What is it? It was supposed to be a custard to go inside my tart, but... Where's the tart? Uh, back there, it, it didn't do well. Obviously, the tart speaks for itself, so I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Sorry, Angel. Okay. I already know it's a disaster. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's like the kind of dessert that gives you for a month. I'm more embarrassed for you, because I think deep down inside, you can do a lot better. Next up, Christine, let's go. Seared pork chop in a creamy Dijon sauce. It's had any ounce of goodness cooked out of it. Okay, Aaron, let's go. Okay, first of all, what is that thing? This is a carpaccio. Just stop there two seconds. Are we doing Italy? Do we switch countries? So it's a carpaccio of filet. Yes. Then I also have a cream of zucchini soup and a chive mayonnaise sauce for some sweet potato pomme frit. The beef, it needs the olive oil and it needs the parmesan, doesn't need the spinach and certainly not the sauteed mushrooms. And the actual soup, zucchini soup, not bad. You know, in comparison to uh, Jenny's soup, you know, it's, it's in a different league. It's got a really nice flavor to it. And as for the sweet potato fries, you know, they should come with a government health warning because they look dreadful, rusty nails. After tasting all of our home cook's dishes, the judges must select the bottom three. From those, at least one person will be going home. Okay, we've tasted 17 dishes, but for all three of us, there were two that really left their competition behind. My dish is definitely one of the top dishes. It's just a restaurant quality dish, no doubt about it. The first dish belongs to... Derek, well done. I'm in a very happy place right now. It's a huge sigh of relief. Great finesse, great skill. The next standout dish was a delight. That dish belongs to... Max, well done. Really good job. Well done. Great finesse, great skill. That means both of you will be team captains in the next challenge, and you are seriously safe from elimination. But there's three of you 
that or not, one of the three worst dishes was executed horrendously and an embarrassment to France. That dish belongs to... Following a grueling elimination challenge, our home cooks await their fate. After tasting all their dishes, the MasterChef judges will send at least one person home. One of the three worst dishes was executed horrendously and an embarrassment to France. I think I'm going home for sure. I'm just waiting for them to call my name. That dish belongs to... Angel. You said French style of cooking was not your strength. What you produced across 60 minutes proved that. The next dish, the cook committed a cardinal sin. Mark, can you come up here and join us? The act of serving raw flour is beyond the point of a technical mistake or flaw. It's kind of an unforgivable mistake and uh, one that we have to acknowledge in a very real way. The third dish was ill-conceived, was not French, and at the end of the day, it just wasn't good. Aaron, please come forward. The fact that it was a carpaccio, it wasn't even sliced thinly, even if we were doing a different country besides France, all the components were jumbled and it didn't work. Okay, the person leaving MasterChef. Lord, please, just let me get by by the skin of my teeth. That's all I need. Just, just let me get by. It's eating me up inside. It's the last thing I wanted to do was, was come out here and, and make it this far and, and go out this way. Mark had a flaw in his dish. Angel had a flaw in her dish. So right now it's a toss-up. You know, I think that all three of us could go home. Angel, your time is done inside the MasterChef kitchen. Please take your apron off and leave. Thank you. Thank you. I actually feel privileged and I feel honored that I had made it this far. America, I cannot cook French food. But if you want an egg roll, if you want some fried chicken, if you want some collard greens, call me. I got you. Mark, Aaron, the bad news is we're not done there. One of you two will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. That person is Mark. I'm feeling disappointed. I made a stupid mistake. I should have listened to my instinct and, and done it the, the right way. Nevertheless, it was an amazing experience and I, I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Erin, you dodged the bullet. Right now, you are walking on thin ice. You're a smart guy and you can cook, let me tell you that. Get a grip. I'm not feeling that great right now, but I'm feeling fortunate and I'm feeling just determined to go out there and not ever be in the bottom three again. Tomorrow's gonna be a new day, and I'm gonna have the opportunity to prove myself all over again. I'm ready to roll. Big day tomorrow. Trust me, the pressure is gonna be even more intense. And my God, the stakes are even higher. We have got one hell of a challenge tomorrow that you cannot afford to fail on. Good night. Tomorrow night on MasterChef. The doors are open! With two home cooks already eliminated, the remaining 16 will compete in their first team challenge. This is going to be a disaster. Both teams will struggle with the massive scale. There's no pizza. Have you ever cooked for 300 people? Me either. And with each other. 
We got Max. Max's arrogance is through the roof. The losing team will face a pressure test. It's all on the line right now. Three. Where another Amateur Cook's Master Chef dreams two. will come to an end. And stop! 